In this video, we're going to be doing an overview to compartment syndrome. So compartment syndrome is a condition where the pressure in one of the body's anatomical compartments is abnormally increased to dangerous levels. So right here we see a cross section of the lower leg, somewhere between the knee and the ankle. Here's the tibia right here, here's the smaller fibula, and we have the various anatomical compartments. So in yellow here, we have the anterior compartment. In blue, we have the small lateral compartment. And then in pink and green, we have the very large posterior compartment. And of course, there's a deep in pink and a superficial in green posterior compartment. And so if the pressure in any one of these compartments increased to dangerous levels, well then that's going to cause vascular compression. Essentially the arteries are going to be closed shut because of all that pressure. And that vascular compression leads to insufficient blood flow. Insufficient blood flow causes the tissues to die, so you get tissue necrosis. And if this is left untreated, it's going to result in a potential amputation. And really with acute compartment syndrome especially, you need to have treatment, and it's going to be surgical treatment within six hours of the onset of the compartment syndrome. We'll see that in just a few minutes. So compartment syndrome is classified generally in two ways. Number one is via the time frame, and two, the specific compartment that is affected. So we already saw the compartments of the lower leg. We could also have compartments of the thigh, of the forearm, of the brachium, so the specific compartment. And then the time frame. And by time frame, we're talking about either acute compartment syndrome or chronic compartment syndrome. And the full name of this is chronic exertional compartment syndrome, which is bad, but it's not quite as bad as acute compartment syndrome. So with acute compartment syndrome, this is normally due to a physical trauma, such as a fracture. This is going to be in three quarters of the cases or a crushing injury. And with acute compartment syndrome, the symptoms do not stop once the insult has occurred once you develop the compartment syndrome. And in general, those symptoms actually get worse. And the only way that you can treat this is with an emergency decompression surgery called a fasciotomy. We'll see that in just a couple minutes, and it really needs to occur within those first six hours after the onset of the compartment syndrome. Then we have chronic exertional compartment syndrome. And this is bad, but not as bad as acute. Okay, And that's because uh, it's normally exertional, it's exercise-induced, and so the symptoms are normally going to reduce back to baseline when the exertion stops, and they only return when the exertion resumes. So again, if you're getting the symptoms, you just stop doing what you're doing. Now, of course, you're probably going to want to see a medical professional regarding that because you can exert to an extent where you push the symptoms kind of over a threshold and you get to a point of no return where then you would need a emergency decompression surgery, okay? Now, in terms of the symptoms of compartment syndrome, we think the five Ps. So pain, it's often severe, and it's going to be in the area of the compartment syndrome where that increased pressure resides. Pulselessness, this is generally going to affect the arteries that are at the level of the pressure or distal to the point of compression. So if we're talking about compression here, midway down the lower leg, some of the pulses we might expect to be diminished, or totally absent, are going to be the dorsalis pedis pulse, and then also the posterior tibial pulse. Okay, And then paresthesias. And numbness is not technically a paresthesia because it's the absence of sensation. It's numbness. Uh, but this is going to be the most common sensory change that people exhibit with compartment syndrome pallor or pale skin tone. You are compressing the blood vessels, so there's insufficient blood flow. So the skin in that area is going to get lighter because there's insufficient blood flow, so pallor. And then paralysis, and it's not true paralysis because true paralysis would be you can't activate the muscle at all, okay? But it's going to be significant weakness, and this is because the motor neurons are also being compressed and they're also not receiving blood flow. So the motor neurons that innervate those muscles are not working, so the muscles are not going to work as well. Okay. Now the diagnosis of compartment syndrome is based on a few things. Number one, a good subjective examination. Number two, a good objective examination where you're likely to pick up some of these symptoms right here, the five P's, right? And then number three is a measurement of intracompartmental pressure 
before, during, and after activity. So a normal compartment pressure is going to be anywhere between 12 and 18 millimeters of mercury. So anything above that, anything greater than 18 millimeters of mercury, that's going to be an elevated compartment pressure indicating compartment syndrome. And therefore, the person will need an emergency decompression surgery. And that surgery is called a fasciotomy. And you can see that over here on the right, it leaves a nasty looking wound. And this is a surgical procedure, you can read this here, that is done to open the compartment, which relieves the pressure back to normal levels to prevent irreversible damage. Again, if you let this compartment syndrome go, that reduced blood flow is going to cause tissue death. When that tissue dies, well, it's not going to work, and it could result in an amputation. Okay? So this fasciotomy can save a person's limb and its function. We want to do that, though, within six hours of the onset of it to prevent that irreversible damage. Okay? Now, when the fasciotomy is done, the wound is not immediately sealed. They'll actually just leave it like this. I can't even imagine that, having to live with that. But that is done to prevent a recurrence of the compartment syndrome. If they relieve the pressure and then they just close it back up immediately, well, then you can get a recurrence of that compartment syndrome. So they just leave this open. And in general, it's allowed to heal via delayed primary intention, split thickness skin grafting, or tissue expansion via continuous traction. So hopefully this video gave you a good overview of compartment syndrome. So leave a like and a subscription, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.